Did you know that, for the first time in history, thousands of people are opting for cremation over traditional burial upon death? Experts predict this trend will continue, with up to 70% of people preferring cremation over burial in the next decade. This raises the question, should Christians consider cremation? Let's discuss this in the video. There are four key questions I want to address. 1. What exactly is cremation? 2. What does the Bible say about cremation, if anything? 3. Will cremation affect my resurrected and glorified body during the rapture? 4. As a Christian considering cremation, what should I think about when deciding between cremation and traditional burial? Question 1. What exactly is cremation? Cremation involves applying intense heat to a body in a cremation chamber, reducing it to its basic elements. Most of the body, including soft tissue, is vaporized, leaving bones that are then burned until they become dry powder or ashes. Question 2. What does the Bible say about cremation? The Bible mentions, By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. This suggests that cremation, which returns the body to dust, aligns with the idea that God created humanity from the earth. Cremation is increasingly studied for its physical, environmental, and social impacts. Data from the North American Cremation Association shows a rising cremation rate, reflecting changes in social preferences, economic constraints, and ecological considerations. Over 50% of Americans now choose cremation, a number expected to grow. Scientifically, cremation is seen as a more sustainable alternative to traditional burial, which occupies vast land areas and uses embalming chemicals, wooden coffins, and gravestones, all having significant environmental impacts. In contrast, cremation uses less space and resources, appealing to those seeking more ecological practices. Question 3. What exactly does the Bible say about cremation? Interestingly, in over 200 instances in the Old Testament where death is discussed, traditional burial is the common method of body disposal. However, the Bible does not mandate this as the only method. There are references to bodies being burned but no explicit mentions of cremation. For example, after Saul and his sons were defeated in battle, the Israelites retrieved their bodies, burned them, and then buried their bones under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh, fasting for seven days. This suggests that bodies in certain conditions were burned rather than traditionally buried, find it impractical to bury the bodies, so they opted to burn them. Another instance of burning bodies, though not specifically cremation, is found in 2 Kings 21. Manasseh sacrificed his own son in the fire, practiced sorcery, and consulted mediums and psychics. Additionally, in 2 Kings 23.6 and 23.20, Josiah saw several tombs on the hillside, ordered the bones to be brought out and burned them on the altar at Bethel to defile it. He executed the priests of pagan shrines and burned human bones on their altars to desecrate them. These references indicate bodies being burned but don't directly address cremation as a practice at the time of death. The events in 2 Kings 23, 6 and 23, 20 reflect King Josiah's religious reforms in Judah. This period, rich in symbolism, shows the complexity of funeral practices within the cultural and spiritual context. Josiah's actions were not just about religious disapproval, but aimed to eliminate pagan practices. Burning bones on altars was more about purification and desecration than a chosen funeral practice. Scientifically, cremation involves ethical and environmental considerations. Researchers have studied historical cremation practices, revealing a variety of methods from simple outdoor pyres to modern facilities minimizing harmful emissions. Biblically, handling mortal remains carries deep spiritual significance. Numbers 1911 mentions that anyone touching a dead person is unclean for seven days, underscoring death as a ritual separation requiring purification. However, the Bible doesn't directly mention cremation, leaving room for interpretation within Christian principles. Modern science views cremation as environmentally beneficial compared to traditional burial, which uses land and releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Cremation, requiring less space and fewer resources, aligns with ecological sustainability. Thus, the discussion around cremation 
intertwined with biblical reflections and scientific insights, goes beyond the disposal of remains to touch on purity, memory, identity, and spiritual continuity. The choice between burial and cremation today involves religious beliefs, environmental concerns, and personal preferences, continuing the dialogue between faith and science. Moving on to the third question, many ask, how does cremation affect my resurrected body? What happens to my body when God gives me a glorified body at the rapture? In 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible states that our earthly bodies, planted in the ground when we die, will be raised to live forever. Buried in humiliation, they will be raised in glory. Buried in weakness, they will be raised in strength. Buried as natural bodies, they will be raised as spiritual bodies. People often wonder how God will reconstruct their bodies if cremated. Firstly, remember that God used earth and dust to create humanity, so he is powerful enough to use dust or ashes to recreate our bodies. Secondly, bodies can be destroyed in various ways, eaten by animals, blown up in war, or burned. God's ability to recreate our bodies is not limited by the manner of disposal. Over time, all bodies decompose into dust regardless of the method of disposal. Soft tissue decomposition can take months to years, while skeletonization can take decades or centuries, depending on the environment. Therefore, regardless of how long someone has been dead, their body will ultimately return to dust. Scientific studies on decomposition, including taphonomy, show how bodies break down into simpler components, eventually becoming part of the Earth. These processes vary greatly, but ultimately lead to the same outcome. Scriptures provide a comforting view of physical life's transience and the promise of eternal life. In 1 Corinthians 15, 42, Paul speaks of the resurrection of the dead, affirming that although physical bodies perish, they will be raised imperishable and glorious, promising a spiritual, eternal existence for believers. Lastly, the fourth question, how do I decide if cremation is right for me? Consider what kind of commemoration you want. An urn can be moved, while a grave can be a place for loved ones to visit and find comfort. Although your spirit has gone, a grave provides a tangible place for memories. Reflect on what will bring comfort to your loved ones and align with your values and beliefs. Simply want an urn or an open casket funeral where loved ones can say their final goodbyes and reflect on your life and impact. Additionally, consider the convenience for family and friends traveling from afar. A traditional burial requires quick arrangements since the body decomposes, necessitating the memorial service within a week or so. The Bible doesn't explicitly mention cremation, neither forbidding nor endorsing it. Biblical burials include figures like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Jesus Christ. Some argue that since the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, it should be honored with traditional burial. Others note that since we return to dust, Genesis 3.19, cremation simply hastens this natural process if done respectfully. Historically, some Christian denominations restricted cremation due to concerns about resurrection. Over time, many have accepted cremation, recognizing that God can resurrect any body. The Catholic Church, for example, has permitted cremation since 1963 if not chosen for reasons against Christian faith in resurrection, preferring burial of bodies or ashes rather than scattering them. Deciding on cremation involves personal and faith-based discernment. It's acceptable if chosen with respect and without denying the resurrection doctrine. Consistency with biblical funeral practices is guided more by Christian principles than specific instructions from Jesus, who focused on salvation, faith, and repentance, not funeral methods. Jesus' burial in a tomb reflects his time's customs, not a mandate for all times and cultures. In summary, cremation can be a viable option if treated with dignity, honoring the body as God's creation and maintaining belief in resurrection. Consider your denomination's teachings, as interpretations vary. The focus should be on the spiritual significance of death and resurrection rather than the method of body disposal. So, my brothers and sisters, I hope these answers provide clarity. None of us likes to think about death, but it's important to plan. I hope this video helps you make a wise decision. See you in the next video. God bless you.
share with your friends, and leave your thoughts in the comments.